welcome to Confluence Fly Shop in Bend, Oregon. My name is Gabriel Juarez. Today we're going to be tying a Sculptzilla. It's a great pattern for our Pacifiris trout here locally that eat minnows and bait fish and sculpins. Um, let's take a look at what we're going to use to tie this fly today. All right, so the hook we're going to be using today is a swing hook from OPST. This is a size four. I really like these hooks for a lot of articulated patterns because they're short shank, wide gap, and barbless. We're going to be using the X-side cones for the head. Um, these have integrated sockets for eyes and uh, are super heavy. They get down nice and quick. And the eyes to match these are going to be uh, five mil fish skull living eyes. We've got rabbit. This is a black barred olive variant. And for our belly, we're going to be using ice stub and UV minnow. This is a great contrast to all of the mottled dark earth tone colors we'll be using for the rest of the body. And a lot of the natural sculpins you see in the river have a nice bright belly. And that's definitely what we'll be getting out of this ice stub. Our gills are going to be strung guinea and red. Um, gill flares um, from natural bait fish. Sculpins are definitely a predatory trigger for bigger fish. Um, this red is definitely something that um, will kind of kick in that predatory instinct for a lot of our brown trout and brook trout and even rainbows. And um, to kind of maintain that forward volume on our fly, we're going to be using uh, some barred marabou from MFC. This stuff is great. Um, it's nice and short and the barring is, is excellent on this stuff. We'll also be using some grizzly soft tackle. Um, just to kind of create a little bit more bulk up towards the front, maintain that forward volume. And to connect everything, our articulation is going to be 20 pound Dacron backing. Lots of movement, not too stiff, not too limp. And lastly, we're going to be using a 35 mil shank for our body from Fish Skull. So I'm going to start my thread just behind the eye. I'll lay down a little bit of a thread base here. My tail's only going to be extending maybe half a shank length beyond the bend. So once I get my measurement there, I've spread these fibers apart and I've exposed the hide of the rabbit. Make some tight wraps here. Just do your best to try not to trap any fibers. really want to make sure that this is secured. Now I'll come in front, lay down a bunch of wraps, and now we've really notched that in place, and it's not going anywhere. So we've got the back half of the fly done. I'm gonna whip finish a couple times. All right, so at this point, I'll come in with my 20 pound Dacron. I'm gonna go one tip in, and the second tip in from the bottom. Make sure these are even, and then I'll come through with the tags and go through itself. We can remove that and put in our shank. I'm gonna slide this X-side cone back, and I'm gonna lay down a thread base in front of it. I'm going to take the back half, I'll take the tips of that Dacron, slide it through the cone, and at this point, the distance between the back hook and the shank should be about an inch or so. That allows plenty of movement without the high risk of uh, fouling. So once I get those Dacron tips through the cone, I'm going to tie those off up front make my way back over the Dacron. And then what I'll do next is I'll put the tips through the eye of the shank and then come back under and wrap over the tips. Come in and trim the excess. This is really going to allow for a solid connection. This Dacron is really locked into place and it's not going to slide out in case you get hung up on a log or even better if you hook up with a bigger fish. So 
So once I've got the Dacron tied in, I'm gonna whip finish. And then I'm gonna come in and lay down just a real thin layer of Zappa Gap. I'll start my thread again on the shank. And I'll just cover up what I wasn't able to cover up earlier. Okay, so at this point, I can tie in my rabbit and again, we're spreading these apart, these fibers apart to expose that hide. That's where I want to tie in. I want to make sure that is right on top of the shank and not off to the side or underneath. Lift this back, make wraps in front. And that really notches it into place. That's not moving anywhere. It's not wanting to slide around the sides of the shank at all or anything like that. So I've got some trusty hair clippers here that I'm gonna just pinch all this back with. Definitely comes in handy for this, these next few steps. It allows this material to get out of your way. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a dubbing loop for our body. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna pull out about seven or eight inches of thread, make a loop, come back over top, make a few wraps over, and secure that loop just like that. I'll advance my thread all the way up to right about behind the X side cone. I'm gonna put some eye stub in my dubbing loop here. I've got my dubbing spinner ready to go. Everything's pretty even on both sides of the dubbing loop. I'm gonna start out real gentle here. If you start spinning away, some of those fibers will tend to wanna to fly out of the loop. And so I'll just get started real slow. Once everything's kinda of locked in, now I can really start spinning. So once that, it's all spinned up and ready to go, I can start making wraps. And as I'm making wraps, I'm maintaining tension here. I'm sliding any kind of fibers back create a nice full body. And as we move up, there is a little bit of a taper here, which is good. It's what we want in our bait fish. It's always somewhat of a little taper, particularly with sculpins. Toss your bobbin a few times behind your dubbing loop. Cinch down, make a few tight wraps in front, and we'll come in, trim the excess. All right, so we've got our body done. Next step is we're gonna unclip this rabbit, bring it over top of our body, and I've pulled this rabbit tight over top of the shank. That way there's not a ton of slack and there isn't the possibility of any kind of gap forming between your body and your rabbit. So I've pulled this tight. Throw your bobbin a couple times over top of that. You really wanna make sure that this is straight on top of the hook and not off to the side. I'm constantly checking that. So I'll cinch down, fold that back, and make some tight wraps in front. All right, at this point, I'm gonna come in flat with my fly tying scissors and try to cut this as flush as I can. And then I'll make wraps over top of that exposed hide. All right. Excellent, so we're ready to tie in our gills. Prepare this guinea, just like this. I've pinched the tip and I've swept these fibers back. This is where we're gonna tie it in. At an angle on my side, a few tight wraps. All right, so we're gonna do our best to sweep all this ice dove and wrap it back so we're not getting anything trapped while we're making wraps here with our guinea. I'm gonna sweep these so they wanna kinda angle back. And I'll begin wrapping. I'm sweeping these fibers back. I'm gonna make about one and a half wraps with this guinea. I toss that bobbin a couple times behind. Again, cinch down a couple times in front. You can come in and trim the stem. I'm gonna do my best to try to separate these. So we've got about even fibers on all sides of the hook. 
and I want to sweep back all of these fibers and make just a few wraps over top that'll really secure it in place. Now that we've got our gills tied in, we're gonna come in with one of these barred marabou plumes. I'm gonna pinch all of these to the end, all the fibers to the end, just like this. And we're gonna tie in our peck fins next. So I've got one tip of a marabou plume going on each side of the fly. And this should extend just a little beyond your guinea. Same thing for the other side here. Want to make sure both of these plumes are even on both sides. We're really wrapping with maximum pressure here, guys. All right, now that we've got our peck fins tied in, the last material we're going to tie in is some of this Grizzly Soft Tackle. And we've got this nice fluffy webby stuff down here towards the middle of the stem. I'm going to sweep that back and that's where we're going to tie it in. Same way we tied in our guinea. I'm going to come in at an angle on my side, tie that down. I'll sweep these fibers back. We'll make one two wraps, throw your bobbin behind the stem a few times. We should be right up against this cone at this point. A couple wraps in front. And I'll come in, trim the stem, and at this point I can whip finish. And it helps if you wet your hands just a little bit and slide these fibers back before you whip finish. That way you're not trying, you're not capturing any. All right, at this point, this cone is still kind of moving around. I'm gonna come in real tight underneath the cone with my Zappa Gap, and I'll shove that in there. I'll lay some glue down. I'm doing the best I can to not get any glue on my materials. I'm gonna position this cone to where both eyes are on either side of the shank and I'm just gonna push back. Let that glue grab the cone. And again, I'm constantly checking to make sure that both sides of the cone, both eyes are even and they're not off kilter. It looks like that glue is set now guys, I've just loaded a spool of brown olive 140 Ultra Thread. I'm gonna come in in front of that cone and just try to close up that gap a little bit. Once I've got a nice thread base down, come in and whip finish. And at this point, I can come in with my flow, try to seal up the gap here even more. We'll zap it. We'll take this out of the vise flip it over. I'm gonna expose this shank. Right about there is where we wanna cut it. We've got a pair of heavy duty wire cutters here. Now that that's cut, this thing is ready to fish. That wraps it up for today, guys. Thanks for tuning in. You can find all the materials that we use today um, on our website. You can follow the links in the description of the video to our online store. Um, we'll see you next time you come through the shop. Thank you.